Hi everyone, I hope you guys are doing good and today we are back again with yet another interesting topic in the world of payments called as CBDCs, also known as Central Bank Digital Currencies. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. So CBDC works in a similar way as a cryptocurrency. The underlying technology which drives the CBDC is similar to that of cryptocurrencies. So I have a question now for all of you. Do you think that uh, CBDCs would also lose their intrinsic value just like cryptocurrencies? For example, if you have a Bitcoin or an Ethereum and the value changes, um, you know, it can go up or down. Do you think that the CBDCs would also have a similar way of holding their intrinsic value? While you think about it, let's try to unfold the answers to some of these questions in this video. If you're new to my channel um, and are interested to learn payments and a variety of topics related to data and analytics, then uh, I would request you to please subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends and colleagues. Right, so what is CBDC? Um, it's a new form of payments. It's one of the key emerging trends in the world of payments. So any payments report that you pull out from any sort of service providers within payments, um, you would find that CBDC is something that everybody is talking about these days. And uh, it's a digital form of national currency, right? So we all have heard about or rather used now as it's quite popular, the cryptocurrencies. And uh, while the concept of cryptocurrencies is, is more around the fact that we wanted to decentralize uh, payments, and ensure that you know there is not sort of a single governing body that is uh, having the kind of uh, control over the things here in cbdc it's it's a slightly contrasting variation that you would see it's a digital form of currency again and uh, it's also the country's official currency so it's it's more like if you are staying in india um, it's a digital rupee if you are staying in UK, it's a digital pound and so on and so forth, right? So from that sense, it still aligns to um, the fiat currency. However, it's not the physical form of the currency that we're talking about here. It's the digital currency. This is issued and regulated by the central bank and it's designed to function as a secure and efficient uh, means to uh, make the payments. What is the other facet of it? Um, it allows individuals and businesses to conduct transactions directly. Imagine that there are two accounts uh, and the money gets transferred from one account to the other without uh, or rather minimal with minimal uh, intervention from any of the intermediaries right so it's going to be highly efficient anyways because you are reducing the number of hops in the middle right if you want to learn about <coughs> these hops and these regular these entities which are there in the payment system you can go through the uh, the playlist again right from the beginning and we have talked about all of these entities extensively in many of our videos. This is something about an introduction of CBDCs and it's also uh, a way where you are enhancing the security and efficiency. Um, obviously because when you are bringing in efficiency, you also have to ensure that um, the, 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 the payment transactions are done in a secure way because security can definitely not be compromised when it comes to money and payments as we all know. There are two different kind of CBDCs that are available. So retail CBDCs, CBDCs are meant for general public, people like you and me, who are going to do the transactions on a daily basis. However, wholesale CBDCs are more for corporates and financial institutions um, for their interbanking payment settlements, uh, etc. So that's predominantly the two kind of varieties that you see here. Now coming to the technology which we are using in CBDCs, we are not going to deal uh, in detail around these uh, these technologies. Um, some of them I have already covered in my previous video, so you can just go and refer to them. However, um, we will go through them in a little bit sort of a summarized way here, right? And what I'm also going to do is, um, I'm going to cover some of these things in a little bit more detail. The plan is to put out some more content on my new course, which is available on Udemy. So if you haven't checked out my new course, uh, I'll leave a link in the description. Go check it out. Uh, it's a it's a concise course which covers 
the critical aspects of payments and not just that there are some useful case studies around data analytics and how you would do sort of um, data modeling aspects in payments etc it's more of the hands-on things that we're trying to focus on that course as well so go check it out in the in the description it's a new course it's still evolving so be patient i'll be putting more updates as and how uh, things progress in the course coming to the technology here a distributed ledger technology also called as dlt um, you know so we talk about blockchain for example and uh, again the idea is to uh, sort of bring in more transparency make it more secure um, immutability now centralized systems what are centralized systems so some are managed through centralized database so not all cbdc's are done through dlt's to a centralized database that is again controlled by the central bank themselves right so that's another way of uh, uh, using the DL the CBDCs. Smart contracts, I have put out a separate dedicated video on smart contracts, so I'm not going to repeat any of that again. But just again in a very, very summarized way, these are self-executing contracts in the form of a piece of code. There are some other facets that are important uh, when it comes to the design and the technical implementation of uh, CBDCs. We also uh, cannot ignore that interoperability is very very important right because you are looking at a way where these new form of currencies these digital coins or digital currencies need to integrate and work in parallel with the fiat currencies as well right so there has to be a way where there is as less friction as possible there is uh, interoperability um, and again you are lo also looking at integrating uh, the CBDC platforms with the other available platforms that are running for so many years now, right? So there is a lot of importance on these two things. Uh, these are as important as the, the first three bullet points that you see on the screen here. Now, digital wallets and UIs for UIs for ease of use, right? So uh, how are you going to use U CBDCs? People like you and me, how are they going to access CBDCs? It has, through, it has to be through an app, for example. So there has to be a ba an app which will be provided, say, through a bank, right? And then the bank um, would would give you that option to load up your, your digital currency in the form of CBDCs. Um, again, regulation and compliance sit at the forefront, as always, because you're dealing with money, you're dealing with um, regulatory and compliance anyway. So when you, whether it's AML or whether it's KYC, privacy-related con uh, concerns, all of them have to be addressed when you're designing a CBDC. Uh, so that's about the functional side of the things and the functional requirements of how the technical implementation of a CBDC uh, would happen. Uh, coming to the non-functional requirements, again, uh, you are looking at scalability, uh, you're looking at resilience, you're also looking at ensuring that uh, the systems are highly available, right? So these are all standard things that you talk about when you discuss about the non-functional requirements. Now that we have understood the uh, the technology part of it and how the CBDCs are implemented in a technical way, at least we have a high level understanding, if not in detail. Let's also now look at two examples in, in the real world to understand how CBDCs would work. So first off, we will look at the a traditional way of making a payment, right? So let's say that you were to go to a coffee shop and you were to make a payment to buy a coffee. So how would that work, right? So you would open your payment app and um, it could be a PayPal or it could be any other app that you're using. And uh, you can use your, your uh, or, or even for that matter, your debit card or a credit card, right? And maybe it's linked through an app. Then you would scan the QR code at the cafe's payments terminal and or, or maybe tap your card, right? And the, and the card would then process the, uh, the payment uh, and there'll be a request that will be sent to your bank. The bank will, uh, approve that the the, uh, the payment depending upon the authentication and if the authentication is successful the bank will then approve the payment and you can um, you know um, you can just uh, walk away with your your coffee right so that is how that is how it works in the traditional way now let's look at a contrasting way of how this would work in the world of CBDCs the steps are slightly different as you can see on the on the slide here right so you would open your CBDC wallet which would be a wallet that's approved by the central bank, right? And uh, this wallet will store your CBDC currencies. You would then, you know, scan the cafe's QR code at the terminal. You will use the QR code uh, in order to initiate the payment. 
and uh, it's an instant payment your cbdc wallet app communicates directly with the central bank system and processes the payment right so you see the difference here in the previous one you were talking about uh, using your debit card or the credit card uh, which means that you are looking at uh, entities like the acquiring bank the acquirer side of the things the payment processor you were looking at the issuing bank you were looking at the card network and so on and so forth right so many things in the middle whereas here it's a very simple way the cbdc's have been loaded onto your digital app you just scan it and then the central bank would do the approval part um, of course they will also do the due um, verification and then the central bank system will will transfer the digital currency to the cafe's wallet so you see everything is so seamless here and and that's kind of uh, you can say a threat as well to the traditional uh, business models that we have been seeing across in payments right because you see there you are just reducing the dependency and which is where it is also important to understand that um, going forwards um, all of these banks whether it's the acquiring side of the things or the issuing side of things they have to come up with new and innovative ways of how they can compete uh, with emerging trends in payments like cbdc's right because they have to offer some value to the customers where the customers still stick to their app their platform in a position where uh, they are offered a competitive value so that's the important bit that i'm trying to stress upon here so this is how you see the transaction gets completed when you use to buy a, uh, when you use cbdc's to buy a coffee so now let's look at the benefits of cbdc so i think um, by now as always in my videos uh, you would be able to appreciate you know these benefits already because we have already covered um, during the uh, flow of the things of how cbdc's are going to be uh, competitive in nature right so they are obviously providing you enhanced security uh, faster transactions very very important uh, financial inclusion you know so um, with cbdc's you are looking to also uh, include people who are not yet on on um, retail banking platforms for example right so there is a sense of uh, ensuring that there is a financial uh, inclusivity uh, that's also brought in the focus here reduced costs uh, so you are looking at lower transactional fees and operational costs the reason is very very simple as you can see there are less number of intermediary bodies in the middle less number of hops and therefore you are reducing the operational costs and uh, transparency and tr traceability of course you know uh, improves transparency in financial transactions aiding in the reduction of illegal activities such as money laundering and fraud right so the more the number of hops that happen uh, when it comes to the payments right the more chances are that uh, you're looking at some problem some sort of a fraud mechanism uh, that might be in play there are more requirements of ensuring that the due diligence is done in the part of you know in line with the aml or the kyc um, guidelines and therefore it increases the time to process the payment so here you are reducing the time as well as you are reducing the cost both i have also put out some references here uh, very very interesting the first one is very interesting where uh, mastercard has given their own view of how um, the uh, the cbdc's should be implemented it's a it's a nice white paper to go through i have left the link um, here and I will also leave these links in the description of the video to please. So please go and check it out. Um, the second one is from Bank of England. I will take you to that link now. Um, there are some good um, FAQs as well that are mentioned out there. And that will help you to get into that frame of mind to understand CBDCs uh, better. And then uh, the last link is, uh, is a handbook which is uh, provided by IMF. So I've given the link to that handbook as well. And they have given some guidelines as well of how the CBDCs should be implemented. Okay, so let's quickly go on to that link in the the second link for the Bank of England. Right. So as you can see here, there is a, a web page. It's called as the Digital Pound, and uh, it's by the Bank of England. There, you know, there is a title at the top. It says we are looking at the case for a digital pound. This being an emerging trend, everybody is kind of. Uh, going through the pros and cons and they have given uh, some nice examples of how a layman could understand and what the bank is doing uh, as the next steps in this direction right so um, so you can go through that and then it also talks about the next steps for a digital pound very very interesting to go through what's their agenda for the next two to three years 
and they have also answered some questions. So why is the bank of looking uh, into the digital pound, right? Let's look at the answer here. We are looking at the digital pound because the way people pay is changing. As we all know, payments is a highly disruptive world. And every day, um, you know, we are looking at new ways of making payments. And, and on top of that, new forms of money are emerging and some of them could pose risks to financial stability. The digital, digital pound would be like an electronic version of the banknotes issued by the Bank of England. We think the digital pound could help us in maintaining the trust in the money and protect our financial system while also improving payments by increasing the efficiency and enabling innovation. All of these things we have already covered in the video, but uh, this is Bank of England's view again here. Right. So and uh, you can go through a lot of lot of these FAQs. So let's look at one of the other ones. So um, so let's look at this one. Would the digital pound be an, just another cryptocurrency? The digital pound would not be a crypto asset. Right. This is the important bit here. You may have heard of crypto assets such as Bitcoin or Ether. This is none of it, none of them. These are issued privately, whereas the digital pound would be issued and backed by the Bank of England. The, crypt, the value of crypto assets can be volatile. Very, very important to understand. Again, this is also a cryptocurrency. This is also a way where you're using DLT and blockchain. But the difference is that the intrinsic value is going to be pegged at the, the fiat currency. So whatever the value of a pound is, the same value you are getting for the CBDC. It's not going to fluctuate up and down as you would for a, for a Bitcoin or Ethereum which means it moves up and down very quickly at short notice. Um, however, here, um, you know, in digital pound, you would have a stable value over time. That means a, a 10 pound note would be the same as a 10 pound bank note. OK, so again, go through all of these questions. Very, very interesting. Uh, when I was doing these, uh, the uh, research for making this video, I went through all of these questions to get a perspective of how the CBDCs uh, are going to change the world of payments. And I thought I should share this with all of you as well. All right. So we will take a stop here and I will come back again pretty soon with uh, another interesting topic um, and share it with all of you. And uh, once again, I humbly request you if you like this video, if you think that you got some value from this video, please ensure that you subscribe. Please give it a like and share it with your friends and colleagues. And that is one way where you can motivate me to make more such meaningful content. And once again, uh, please also check out my new course on Udemy around payments. Uh, this course is evolving. It's a it's a hands on course. I have given some very good exercises to uh, for all of you to practice some of the concepts and payments as well in that course. So please do check it out. Leave a comment and let me know how you're getting along with, with your uh, learning in payments. Thank you. And until next time, bye.